looks like we are finally hitting that 7 p.m. SGT mark. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everyone for coming in and joining us today. Hey, Julian. Gene, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I think the community is excited to hear our September update. Yeah. Well, it's been a big month. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, well, cool. Let's kick off because there's some good people that have turned up on time. Um, where do we begin? Yeah, why don't we start with some of the events that we had in Korea, STO Summit, KBW, and then Token 249. Let's get them some updates. Yeah. So thanks for joining everyone. Um, <clears throat> for those that are here now and also um, the super majority of people we know listen in uh, at a time that suits them. Um, where are we? So yeah, we, we probably two of the most important um, weeks of the year, uh, Korean blockchain week was, um, seems like years ago, but it was just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, I think that um, the Korean market's obviously super important um, from a crypto currency volume trading. Um, it's historically been one of the best. Um, and they're still, I think, in a licking their wounds from the big lunar fallout, which sucked in, took down a lot of Korean um, holders. Uh, and it meant that the regulators have still been pretty, pretty unclear about, you know, how, well, what crypto is up in Korea and whatnot, but it's unstoppable um, and continues on. I mean, just for information, Korean cryptocurrency exchanges are not allowed to have market making. So there's all of these strange intricacies about that market. But again, as I said, it's, it's unstoppable and the demand uh, and, and interest in the space continues to grow. So um, that has led to the interest and excitement around real world asset tokens, which used to be called security tokens, which in Korea are still called security tokens because it's just beginning. Um, and so <clears throat> we went back and keynote spoke at the second STO summit. Um, it was, it's more kind of TradFi focused. Um, that's how I kind of like to think of security tokens and real world asset tokens. Like security tokens was the first version of of what we're t doing now it was the first terminology back in 2018. Um, it was a lot of TradFi guys, you know, trying to sell, you know, un uninteresting uh, traditional assets, thinking that tokenizing meant that all the DGENs would be their exit liquidity. And that failed dramatically. Um, the DGENs weren't interested in three, four, five percent real estate deals. They wanted the excitement of crypto and NFTs and and cryptocurrencies and utility tokens and everything else that, that goes with the space. And so what happened in the last two years, we've seen a, a rebranding of the, 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 asset, the industry really to, to real world asset tokens now known as RWA. For those that are fairly new to the space, RWA is already a terminology from Wall Street, risk weighted adjusted assets. Um, uh, so, there has been some more confusion with that, although I think RWA looks like it's clearly winning the terminology wars now. So anyway, so STOs in Korea, everyone's lining up to get licenses. The regulators have talked about putting out clarity around the rules. Uh, essentially, that looks like it's going to be next year now. It's meant to be this year. That being said, we can launch Korean RWAs for Korean investors today, and we're doing that on AXWAP. I think we're looking at IP. We're looking at more exciting stuff, movies, um, K-pop, uh, really exciting stuff that, that really has never been available to anyone outside the industry before, um, let alone geographically based. Um, and so, you know, I think that, you know, Korean culture, K-pop has been one of the most successful exports of a culture in the history of the world, um, around the world from the music to, you know, predominantly the music, but now obviously surging in, in really exciting and interesting movies through Netflix and whatnot and winning some of the best movies. So, so we've got a lot of discussions going on that front. And then we had, um, uh, KVW kind of main event. Um, you know, there was a lot of people talking about RWA, uh, a lot of new projects, uh, a lot of people putting together, you know, new plans, trying to do a token launch and having very little understanding, if any, around regulation, but 
thinking that RWA is just another crypto asset class, um, which it isn't, and very differently so. Um, but it was very promising. We spoke at five or six events. We have a bunch of um, partnerships, collaborations coming from that. M m most interestingly, and I know there are a lot of questions about the, the B2B partnerships that we're doing. I'm not going to name the names because we all we do all day long is, is have people copying us and then going out and saying they do all the things we do. And usually it's just complete BS, but I don't want to help anyone any further trying to cheat the community. Um, when these partnerships come to fruition, of course, the community here will be first to know. But what's coming out, what, what's under works is plugging into one of the biggest wallets up there. And that essentially is our, our um, platform powering the back end of real world asset token issuance trading. And then the front end and the users of these wallets who don't have the wallets themselves or even the crypto exchanges do not have securities licenses. Um, they can start to buy and sell RWA. And, and that discussion is going for us from Korea to around the world and back from crypto currency exchanges to wallets, probably five, six or seven. Um, each one of them is, is a unique case because it's a business, it's a platform, it's been set up somewhere, it has a way of doing things. We need to work out the smoothest UX UI and make sure both sides, and, and it's very important, you know, both sides are comfortable with how it works because the last thing we want at IXSwap is other people um, doing the wrong thing and therefore you know, us being our license, our reputation, our license being jeopardized. So it's just as important. We, we don't just want to sell for the sake of selling. Whoever we're working with, are they following advertising rules, marketing rules, selling securities? Like there's ways to do things in B2B partnerships, but it must be carefully thought through and mapped out. Everyone must be all on the same page. So, but very, very exciting. So Korea I kind of felt is kind of a bit still on the RWA side is, is still just getting it together. But, you know, got to remember that, Two years ago, there was nothing there. And I think over the last, you know, last year in October, November, Hong Kong came from nothing to, okay, we're gonna try and give some regulations and start this off from the RWA side. Korea said the same thing. And then Japan is already away. Uh, we'll be making a trip up there because we've also got similar relationships under this, under discussion as well. Um, and, and very exciting ones, um, you know, very large platforms that you know, want to sell cryptocurrency or are selling cryptocurrency, the, the next evolution for all of these groups is is adding real asset tokens. Um, I, I've, I've said this a few times publicly, but even on the, uh, even on stage last week, but at the token to for nine, five or six cryptocurrency exchanges tell me face to face that they're selling RWA tokens and essentially illegally. Um, so the better ones are trying to work out how to legitimize it and the the lower type exchanges will just sell as long as they can till they get in trouble. Um, I don't think they have, a lot of them have that much volume, so no one really cares, but a lot of the crypto exchanges just added these yield bearing, you know, tokens and whatever tokenized stocks to their platforms and just think that they can get away with it. That, that, that eventually won't work. Um, Binance, Bitfinex and FTX did this in 2021 and had to pull them down. They listed tokenized stocks and um, with no licenses. So, that that was um that was the first iteration and now we're at the second iteration or the well, it's probably the fourth or fifth iteration but it's it's sort of the second phase of the the crypto DeFi guys getting the concept of RWA and the better players trying to actually work out how to do it legally because if you think about the amount of RWA that are going to come out over time it's going to far supersede it's going to be much much bigger than the crypto market so essentially the asset class and what they could make money off trading fees of selling these assets is going to be equal or bigger depending on the platform and its strategy. So it's certainly something that, that we've been building towards for many years and it's great to see these guys sort of um, coming up together. Um, so ju jumping along, uh, you know, 2049, um, I, I don't think it's any surprises that, you know, we are based uh, headquartered out of Singapore. Um, biggest blockchain event in the world now, incredible, um, almost too big. <laughs> I heard many people saying hundreds and hundreds of side events where you know, the real action takes place on the, at the right ones. Again, we spoke at Matrix Ports uh, event. I think we spoke at RWA Centrifuge. Uh, we spoke at Coinbase House, I think it was called. Uh, we spoke at LW3, the, the Family Office Forum. I think there were a few other ones. I lost track, there's so much going on. But yeah, you know, 
heavy, heavy lifting, 12, 15 meetings a day, four or five events every night goes on seven days straight and then everyone rolls into the Formula One. Um, but it was great to see the sentiment. I actually wrote some notes here. Um, let me see if I can find them. I, I, I wanted to give a quick summary of 2049. Um, first for the community here, I'll probably post this up um, tomorrow on LinkedIn. So here it is, a few bullet points. Uh, it was the biggest event on the planet ever in the history of the world. And for people that don't know, Token 2049 um, only in, is in Singapore by chance. Like two years ago, I think, 2022, um, they set up in Hong Kong. So 2049 is meant to be the year that Hong Kong gets given back to China. Well, China's already taken it over, but back in 1999, the agreement was in 50 years, Britain would hand full control to China. Uh, so token, so they set this conference up and got everyone excited and sold all these tickets. And then I think Hong Kong closed down since COVID. So they jumped to Singapore. I can't remember the time. It was like one or two months before because no one really heard about it. And it actually was quite successful. So then they did it again the next year because Hong Kong was still locked down and now I don't think they'll ever go back to Hong Kong again. The whole thing's kind of exploded. And of course there's Dubai and I hear America's in the pipeline. Um, but so what, what was the dominant theme? RWA. I mean, I'm, I'm trying not to live in an echo chamber, um, but so many conversations are about RWA protocols that have no use case now saying they're all about RWA wallets that, you know, are all about RWA, you know, um, service providers from, you know, market making to this, a lot of people talking about how they want to do RWA. Of course, we've got our finger on the pulse and know that a lot of it's hype and talk, but the, 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 the point is that, you know, it's certainly now become a key um, sector of the whole blockchain industry. And I think that's a combination of, there was very little talk of NFTs. I love NFTs, but there was very little talk of NFTs. I didn't hear one person talk about metaverse. So that, that, that looked like it was, and I know that there's stuff going on out there and some of the community love that and that's great. But, you know, in terms of thematics, just gone. I mean, last cycle, NFT, metaverse, I can't remember hearing about anything else. Um, you know, before that was DeFi. So a lot of deep in centralized physical infrastructure discussions, a bit of Bitcoin, um, especially layer two. Also, we're talking to people about issuing the first RWAs on Bitcoin protocol in the history of the planet, which is really, really interesting. That's, that's quite far away. So but no one hold me on that one. Um, but yeah, we saw some of the bigger groups, bigger, big, big groups in blockchain from custody to Bitcoin mining, looking at, you know, talking, looking, where's the opportunity in the RW space. Um, you know, one thing I also noticed, which is interesting, um, I think that the, um, you know, the old days of VC pump and dump on the DGENs is, I think is, is dried up. Um, I think there's a lot more sophistication knowledge. Uh, in the market around how token sales have historically worked and they've evolved over time. It does look healthier now from projects really wanting to get investors that can help them because most VCs don't do anything uh, regardless of what they claim to do and selling to like either KOLs that actually invest money versus a couple of cycles ago where they demanded free tokens and didn't tell anyone and then talked about it on their YouTube and dumped on everyone. Now they're buying tokens and they're telling everyone they're investors. To me, that's a huge upgrade um, for the whole uh, system. But also I think it's getting very, it's getting harder and harder to launch tokens because there's so many out there. And, and, and this year, specifically this year, to some of the people in the community that keep um, you know, asking about listing on, a, on, on bigger cryptocurrency exchanges, 80, 90% of the tokens I've looked at and researched that listed on sexes since February, March this year, all got hammered in price. So they would have spent huge money and the market got choppy, went sideways and down. But the point is the concept that you just launch on a new exchange and everything goes 50X is, is, is also not guaranteed. And there's just so much volume. There's so many people launching tokens. I think it's it's really hard to pick the good ones, a lot of the good projects in brackets, good, still have huge unlocks coming down the pipeline. Um, some of the big token projects have got unlimited district, unlimited minting. I was chatting with Aaron the other day, like I totally forgot about this, but <laughs> bunch of bunch of the tokens from 2017 have just got unlimited um, supply. And for some reason, the world doesn't really 
care so much, so they just print money every month. Um, anyway, either way, I think the models are changing around launching tokens. And I think from our position, having a fully circulating supply um, that's now deflationary and we're burning tokens. People, a lot of people have lost tokens. We do not have 180 million for sure. I know of a couple of million that have been lost. Um, so that's very promising as well, I think, for our project. And you see that these more professional investors coming into the space, they're actually looking at these key metrics. They want to make sure there's nothing coming down the pipeline, no big dump. So we're now out there. So, and, and the super majority of our trading is on, on DEXs, right? On Uniswap. There's no wash trading on DEXs, so you can look at, I mean, I might say Coinbase might be the only one that doesn't do it. I, I don't want to, you know, pick friends or enemies here, but a super majority of crypto exchanges and token projects are washing, wash trading their coins to create fake volume. Um, and you can't do that on DEXs, right? So our volume, although, what is it today, half a million, might be a lot lower than some others, but it's a lot more real than, you know, 90% of them out there. So. This is really solid because this is just all um, transparency and the smarter investors in the space, the players are like, okay, well, we can see what's really happening here and there's no, there's no hidden doors and crazy things coming down the pipeline. That being said, we do want to list on one. Um, we're basically just going to go Coinbase or Binance or, or one of the Korean groups. Um, and there's only one or two there that are worth speaking to. That's it. So. We're not going to spend time and energy mucking around on anything that's not those groups. Um, and we have had um, discussions with all of those groups. Um, and they're also, because of the volume and the difference, you know, the market we're in, that's the asking price for listing and, and the costs and trying to jump through the hoops is, is getting extremely unreasonable as well. But positively, you know, these exchanges are not, they know they can't just keep listing you know, dog with hat meme coins that are happy to pay their fees, but then what happens in the next cycle? These tokens go to zero and there's no real use case. It's a whole, I mean, yes, the use case is what it is, but they're looking to shore up their, not only shore up their cryptocurrency quality, but also add the RWA tokens. And that's, that's one thing that we've been saying for a very, very long time, that RWA will help crypto. It gives it more real use case. You're pairing up real estate tokens and, startup and you know billions and trillions of dollars of real world assets against cryptocurrency whether it's usdc or ethereum or ixs you've created this huge use case and i don't know why it's taken the crypto industry so long to get bullish on rwa because it was always going to help them more people know that so thinking about listings i think we've we've got a lot of programs firing off at coinbase from base protocol to um, coinbase wallet to a whole bunch of other stuff trying to get some more assets listed on there um, then, you know, then we push towards that and saying, got some discussions going by nets, but it's great to see and hear that, that, um, the real tangible inbound from, you know, key players in the space. And, and I think, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it plays out. I think we're moving into a bull market. I think RWA as a crypto category is definitely going to be one of the top three this cycle, hopefully forever, but definitely this cycle. Even though most of the people in the world in crypto think that RWA tokens are the utility tokens of the platform, which is not the case, All right? So even IXS token is the utility token of the IXWAP RWA platform. The RWA tokens are the tokenized VC funds, tokenized startups, tokenized real estate. They're the real world asset tokens, right? But in, in our industry, we've got this crazy situation where you've got, you know, the DGEN community buying altcoins, buying RWA utility tokens, Ondo token, IXS token, Maple token, they're utility tokens, they're not real world asset tokens, which is great for us anyway, because, you know, drives user base and engagement and we're building out more and more use cases for our utility token anyway. But ironically, most of the platforms in the world are only selling, most of the people getting all the noise at the moment, selling like tokenized treasuries, money market funds. They're not even offered up to the retail investors. That's only for like high net worth. Like BlackRock's um, tokenized treasury fund, it's a minimum $5 million investment, you know? And so the flip side of that is on IXWAP, we offer everyone the ability to invest with one USDT. So we have both. We have the, the RWA utility token, which is IXS, and we have real asset tokens. We need more time in the market for the rest of the world to understand this. Um, Cause at the moment it's completely split. 
most I, I'd say almost a hundred percent, kind of the ninety nine percent of people that buy BlackRock's tokenized treasury are not buying on those utility altcoin, <laughs> and ninety nine percent of people who are buying on those altcoin probably have no idea, you know, have no interest in the in the treasury, and, and we're building other assets that are appealing to the to, to everyone to the retail community. We think. Treasuries, money market funds is fantastic, great for the ecosystem, not not where we want to play. We want to play where there's currently no competition, where currently no one has retail licenses. We're doing the first startups, VC funds, assets that I actually want to invest into that I think is, that could do 5, 10, 20 X's because a tokenized treasury is never going to do that, right? It's going to give you 5% all day long, but that's all it's going to give you well, for the year, 5%. Um, so that's been that's been kicking along as well, which I think is is really interesting. Um, I think that um, the, the the other thing that I take away from twelve point nine, oh, there's just so many horrible deals out there. Um, I guess every cycle, people just try and go for a, a token grab. Um, got that complaint from a lot of different investors, like, oh wow, there's, there's so much garbage to sift through. As I said, lots of new tokens, so much competition these days, even just to get the. The, the token launch, forgetting the whole making it work and building something. Um, but anyway, we're ahead of that curve. So we've, we've done many years of dealing with all the, the difficulties of getting getting the token launched and up and running and exchanges and whatnot. So we're in a good spot. Um, as I said before, Metaverse felt like it was dead or on life support somewhere else. Uh, hopefully that's not the case. I know that there's there's some really interesting things going on out there, but that's not our, that's not our area of focus. Um, new chains. So it's really interesting. Um, you know, we're chain agnostic. We're, well, I should say we're public chain agnostic. We, we don't believe in private blockchains. We never have up until two years ago. Um, STO, so jumping back to security token terminology, which used to be the industry 2018 to 2022, it was all called security tokens. Most of those projects and, and, and platforms were doing stuff on a private chain that no one cared about. We, we never understood that. And the whole purpose of issuing on public chain interact with all the other digital assets on those public chains, whether they're stable coins or NFTs or cryptocurrencies, whatever. That's the power connecting to decentralized finance is, is not building your own little chain. So we went out and built all our architecture on chain, on public chain from day one. And it was only, I mean, I really could pinpoint the moment when everything changed was Larry Fink saying in October last year, like everything's getting tokenized, which we said five, six years ago. And it all has to be on public chain. And we said the same thing, but that's kind of the moment that I can look at back in time now and say, when did everyone just get so bullish on public chains and, and what, what happened? And it was like, you know, biggest investment in the world said, this is what we need to do. So <laughs> the rest of the world said, okay, that's what we need to do. So anyway, um, very healthy for us and very exciting for us. Um, we're building on base to get to bases, you know, to get to Coinbase's hundred million wallets. Um, that's a mission. Obviously, um, the, the value of that is not um, lost on anyone. So trying to get to that is, is, is a lot of work. But we're working through four or five different departments and channels to see what more we can do with them. Um, they're a huge company. They're one of the biggest in the space now. Um, so things don't move very quickly. But, you know, they've also got, you know, some of the best people in the space in terms of, you know, legitimate professional business people to work with whereas other crypto groups we've, we've spoken to over the years have been a complete joke and i have no idea why they're still in business but anyway tokens went up so they're still here um i don't think there'll be a shortage of new chains we've got um you know there are legitimate groups out there uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name names um from who i think are legitimate not but there are groups that are building communities and when i mean legitimate they're building communities they're they're, they're, they're speaking with asset owners and issuers and they, they, they understand that, that, you know, the protocol is just the technology, one of the technology layers. Like, you know, the ones that are saying that, you know, if anyone out there is thinking you're going and, you know, piling into these utility tokens of these RWA protocols, you know, it, if they're saying that they're issuing and trading RWA, it's just not true, right? They can't do that. It's like saying that, the paper that an investment contract's written on, you know, issue shares and trade shares on NASDAQ. It's like, no, that's just a piece of paper. It's critical to the space um, of, of, well, of issuing, of signing a contract with someone, you need a piece of papers, but that, that's where it ends. So from the protocol perspective, like um, 
again, we're agnostic. We want to support innovation. We want to help as many protocol networks that are legitimate get off the ground. But like issuing a real asset token on a protocol to yourself or to no one doesn't add any value. You know, you need to be plugged into licensed venues, broker dealers, exchanges, custodians, where the activities, AMM marketplace, et cetera, where you can buy, sell, lend, et cetera, to make it worthwhile. So therefore the protocol uh, without the IX swaps of the world is, is a one out of 10 and the protocol with IX swap is a 10 out of 10, all right? It gives that that use case. So that's interesting. I don't think it'll ever stop. I think that every cycle, there's a bunch of investors that, that know the story of layer one utility tokens, know that um, they've been some of the most successful in the world, know that there's a bunch of protocols out there that today that still do nothing and have no users and brackets are worth billions. So there'll always be funding for it. But again, competition there is growing. We see a bunch of really interesting protocols coming down the pipeline um, that we're exploring. You know, I, I, ton, ton for sure. You know, Telegram's 900 users. They're selling crypto. You know, what's next? RWA. Um, SWE, really like the guys over there. Very smart. It's not EVM, but they've, they've, they've got the right ideas. Plume Network, we really like those guys. They're layer two RWA focus, but they're in brackets doing the right things. Um, who else is there? There's a few more out there that come along the pipeline. Um, so, um, we will again, we'll remain agnostic if we can integrate and, and it's not always easy if we can integrate and there's a business case for it, we'll do that. We started on ETH and Polygon ETH cause that's where the only place where STOs were Polygon to reduce the fees along comes base. Um, you know, base building to the, to the hundred million users of Coinbase is, is obviously very attractive and base is the only protocol that, that I'm, I'm aware of kind of public protocol in brackets. that doesn't give financial grants or token more uh, tokens to incentivize people to build on there. The incentive, the incentive is the 100 million users, but then it's like it's run like a normal business. You've got to integrate, spend money, spend you know, bring assets on, make it work, and then they'll they'll start helping you. And that's how normal business works. <laughs> Not like a lot of the blockchain stuff where people just get paying free tokens. They minted out of thin air to get people to do stuff. But anyway, that's base. Um, we'll see what else comes down the pipeline. Um, there's always limited time and resources to to do anything and and um, we get pitched a new protocol every day, basically. Um, anyway, um, I think, um, uh, what else? Um, there's definitely more builders in the space out here, but I, I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't find that to be the, in Korea. It's very pretty balanced. I think there's, there's a bunch of investors. There's definitely a lot of builders in Korea. There's a lot of Korean, um, team members in lots of blockchain companies around the world. So, um, but you know, in Dubai, I didn't feel like I met a single builder. Um, the 249 there, I think it's just, or people shilling tokens and in brackets investors, but um, very different. But in, in, in Singapore, it was it was just huge numbers of all, all types. So lots of builders, lots of real, real, really smart people, engineers, a um, lot of CTOs running around, a lot of and a lot of investors, of course. Um, there's a lot more women in the space now, which I think is great. I think that's really an Asian thing. Um, it's good to see. I think there's a lot more. Um, pragmatic approach to, to, to business in Asia, which just if people are good at stuff, you know, it doesn't really matter if they're a man or a woman. There's a lot of Asian women who are running massive companies all through Asia, especially up in China. Like, so that's good. You know, who wants to go to a party with a hundred dudes? Like, I don't. Um, that's good to see that uh, there's a there's a lot more. There's the most women in blockchain when you do stuff in Singapore. Um, what else? Team America is back in the game. So um, this is a big one. Um, yeah, I'm going on here, Gene, but I'll just these these just these points I think were important. Um, I, I you can love and hate you can love or hate Donald Trump. I'm I'm apolitical. Um, but you know the minute he said we're going to be pro Bitcoin, <clears throat> it felt like the whole American blockchain investment space and people just woke up and started looking again at Asia and elsewhere. So. A couple of months ago, that happened, and um, there were a lot of American groups in in Singapore, like the most in four years. It's really really been very flat, um, of course, because the SEC and all the drama that's been attacking crypto. It's been a horrible place to build a company in America, and it's driven a lot of the talent and the talent and the companies offshore. Now it, it kind of felt like it's back, um, and so that was great. The the industry needs American money, American American brain power. I mean America as in everything, not just you know American flag, but like the companies, the Silicon Valley, like the startups, the the and the the, the capital. And there's there's 
there's no capital like for the space that even compares to America. China was having a crack a while ago, but that was years ago, way before, and then ever since then, Xi Jinping has just crushed everything. So there's no VC, there's no PE, there's nothing going on in China anymore. So now, you know, the industry wants, should welcome America back. Um, got a lot of new uh, investor contacts from, from the conference uh, as well, which is great. Um, you know, what else, try to wrap this point up. Um, everyone's pretty bullish. In Korea, it was getting slightly better. That was like a month ago. And in Singapore, I felt like, you know, a lot of the smarter people I know, a lot more of the OGs, I think that the consensus was where we're getting more bullish. Um, so that's, you know, it's obviously way, be, way better than being bearish. Um, on the cyber front, uh, the hacking, I think that's just skyrocketing. Um, so that's, that's probably a big negative. Um, you know, I think for all the community, um, you know, the scammers, um, phishing attacks, you know, there's countries, state sponsored, there's countries like Korea that have football fields of engineers in rooms, just trying to steal stuff from people. And there's 20 countries like that. So, you know, it's, it's a very challenging, um, time. You know, there's a lot of people impersonating people from everyone from we, we're getting this all day long. Uh, so I think everyone has to really individually and if they run companies really think long and hard, you know, uh, each week and day about what they're doing to protect themselves. Um, it's, it's, it's getting galactic. I think with the AI coming as well, it's only going to get worse. So that's, that was a bit of a downer, um, but it is what it is. So, you know, you have to, we've got to do what we can to, to keep it, to keep, to keep our assets <laughs> protected and, and also our identities as well as our, our, as the community as best as possible. Um, we have had a bunch of people that have been scammed, um, in over the years, um, pretending to be this and that, um, it's easy to, uh, it's, there's, a, there's social engineering, there's, there's so many different types now. So, um, everyone should plug in and, and keep aware of it. The, the technology is amazing. The, the asset, um, the concept of this whole thing, cryptos and, and other is, is incredible. Comes with comes with a new layer of, of um, thinking and energy and and, and um, investment you need to make in yourselves and your your software and your phones and how you operate. Um, it's, it's really serious. Um, lastly, on this front, um, crypto exchanges, at least the better ones, are definitely getting a lot more professional. Um, much less cowboy it's still out there like crazy, but certainly where where we're directing our activity, it's becoming it's becoming a much more a better place uh, to kind of operate um, normal conversations, a bit more professionalism, just general respect from dealing with people and less craziness. But it's still out there. The last one was like I don't know what's going on, but no one seems to know how to. Most people have lost the ability to party. The the drinks and and, and parties are still with so many of them, but. You know, compared to the last couple of years ago, um, maybe people are getting healthier. I'm not really sure. Gene, that was a pretty long one. It's already gone through. Um, what else have we got? All right. Thanks for those updates and key takeaways, Julian. I think the few other things that we want to tell the mem uh, community here as well is if you invested in the SSO1, token distribution has been done to that. Those have been airdropped to your watch. It's another key achievement that IXWAP has um, submitted. And as well as the first investment report report for ckgp uh maybe julian you want to touch up quickly on otps and what how's it it's been going yeah. so far yeah yeah look o otp is a terminology we coined um and we gave it to essentially a way to to tokenize a company that could invest into things all right we call it the otp on-chain tokenized portfolio because you know, we wanted VCs and fund managers to stop doing things the old way and start doing things the new way and set these things up super fast, super low cost with the ability to, to have all the community investing with minimum $1. They can set whatever minimum they want. So the first one we did was with Coach K, who has been an early investor in the project and, a, a, you know, in my mind, a professional trader uh, and been in the space for many cycles. Um, so he's choosing the assets. In this case, we decided to basically make a fund that he manages that chooses tokens specifically around gaming, maybe some private sales. It's a little bit fluid really up to him. Um, 
but it's tokenized and the investors on the platform can buy it with one USDT and then we create a liquidity pool so people can trade in and out versus a typical VC fund which you invest in and you might wait 10 to 15, 20, 17, 18 years to get out of it. So it's really ticks all the box of what the whole concept of RWA is with, with fast, you know, efficiency, you know, everyone can get involved, um, low cost, um, on chain, um, you know, liquidity optionality with the pools, like, you know, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, and now, now, which, you know, Gene and I were just talking to today, it's the, I, I, we should check this. We should fact check. I you should fact check myself, Gene, but, Maybe you could try and do this, get some of the team to help tomorrow. I think it's the best performing RW asset in the history of the world. Why? Because it's done like 15% in like a month or two. So annualized, um, you know, that's going to be whatever it is, 100%, 150%. Um, So anyway, we're super excited by that. We're speaking with a whole bunch of other, um, you know, groups that want to start using it. We want to push it out. Um, and the same similar structure can be used just to tokenize a startup as well. It's super fast and super quick. It's all legal. It's compliant. Um, the perfect structure for issuing RWA tokens and being able to trade RWA tokens because, you know, most community doesn't really care about it. But when you, when you um, run the project, if you are the person managing it, you've got to set it up. You've got reporting issues. You've got, you know, management issues. You've got admin issues. So there's a lot of issues, which is why they take a fund management fee. And we've, we've cut all of that down by, I'd say, 90%. So it's really attractive. Um, forgetting all the cool stuff about what, you know, what it is, but just even from setting up and the cost and how much time it takes me to you know, do the admin on this each year, if I'm the fund manager, it's incredible. And yeah, license reduction, cost reduction, it's just, it's awesome. So we're really excited to keep pushing that out. And it's the, the, you publicly put out the report, I think this week, Gene, or last week about about the first, kind of the first, um, you know, how, how it's doing and it's doing great. All right. And that's that for CKGP. So if you guys missed out on that one, don't worry. You can KYC and always head on over to the IXS deck. And I think the last update that people are waiting for before we jump into the community questions is the base integration. Um, the staking and the bridge is finally live. So I think maybe the community maybe wants to hear a little bit more about that and what we have planned for those that stake and receive RWA airdrops. Yeah, so we the team's hard at work trying to create a value, right, for for the community, the platform, the token. Um, one of the key problems in the industry, in the cryptocurrency industry to date, is being that um, most of the staking programs, farming programs, um, it's all about locking up token supply to try to increase the price by reducing the volume of tokens out there. But the reward mechanism for locking up has, simp- has typically been interest and in rewards in the same token, right? So lock up altcoin one, get altcoin one as, bon- as interest, like whatever. Lock up 100 altcoins and every month you get 10 altcoins as a bonus. That, that works very in a very short period of time because at the beginning it looks like it's great. And then what happens, um, and if price goes up, it works fantastically. And as soon as price goes down, every time the rewards are given, they just get dumped. And so that's been one of the core problems and one of the main issues with uh, the, the bear mark, the creation of the bear marks. It's like the house of cards. And when it starts falling over, it just gets destroyed. So what we've done is we've come out with a completely new way of staking. And the new way of doing things, which again, no one on the planet besides us that I'm aware of can actually do is you stake IXS tokens. So we're still, uh, you, um, we're still focused on that first part of this concept, which is locking up supply, rewarding them, but then, you know, taking those tokens off the market. But instead of rewarding in IXS tokens, which just creates the problems I mentioned, and then price destruction, we, we reward with RWA equity tokens. So. This is like never happened before. We're just getting it off the ground. Um, we're looking to get all of our issuers. So those are the people that, that are launching these RWA, you know, call them the fund managers or, or, or the company owners. We're, we're looking to try to get a portion of each one of their companies or funds as the rewards for the, for the stakers. Um, we're excited to see how it goes out. It's never been done before. It's not 
and and you know again it it, it removes one of the key problems with all the staking which is like as soon as you get the rewards even if you got the rewards um they'd be in an equity token of a project even if people dump them it wouldn't dump the pro it wouldn't affect the price of ike swap and they'd probably leave them in there to get the next ones so i mean some of the issuers might have an issue with this but i mean this is the first this is literally like the first time it's ever happened so we've got a lot of um experimenting to do but that's the that's the bare bones of it i think it's i think it's really exciting i think it's you know another world first one that the team and you know, hopefully it drives a lot of value for ISS. And then, you know, again, I think, um, you know, the projects that start airdropping RWA tokens on people that are in the staking program, you know, hopefully benefit a lot with a, a more distributed, you know, community that, um, you know, that holds, you know, equity in their companies that supports it. And, you know, we go from there. I look at it kind of like an ESOP program, um, where if you do a startup, you carve out five, 10, 15% of your shares for your team over time so essentially if you can tokenize some equity um you know if you're raising money for projects sometimes you might pay commission to different people you might have this cost that cost so i think you know if, if we if we can position it properly to more and more of these issuers then we get into a situation where you know it's sort of seen as yes you're giving away you know reward asset tokens of your fund or startup but it creates x amount of value and you know this is this, and we'll, we'll try to make it work for them. So it's still very much in a tight cost uh, bandwidth, but it adds a lot of value, right? So anyway, that, that's that's our new RWA staking program. All right, I just want to add in there. So for the, you guys that are staking there, don't worry, we will have some more campaigns down the pipeline. And it's really just a way for you guys to really come in and come to the platform, really be a part of something that's never really been done before. Uh, all right, so I guess we're finally going, jumping into the community questions here and the first one looks like it's for you julian so the first question is um julian mentioned that there were multiple sexes talking to ixwap about integrating for services so they can offer rwas to the yep. customers are there any news on this or any deals being made so far yeah um again we're not going to mention the companies but we're hard at work looking at the legal side the technical side and the commercial side of this again like it's hard for people to really get their heads around it. Like, never been done before in the history of the world. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna do it, and we're gonna get things done. Um, I've got no timelines on this. It's one of our. It's our number one, um, you know, KPI in in our in, in our in our sales um, department, which we've just set for this quarter. OKRs we use. Um, yeah. So all I can say is it's it's at the highest priority, and we're dedicating. You know, we're doing. And remember, we're we're plugging into a different company, right? That has, you know, all of their own tech people, licenses or not, issues, geography. So um, we'll, we'll do what we can and we'll, you know, community the first to know. But we'll, we'll get there. There's, there's a lot of appetite. And this hasn't happened before, you know. I, I, we've never mentioned this, I think, in, in, up until maybe a month or two ago. But, you know, it's only now that you start to see the appetite from these groups because they're finally getting it. So we've tried this. We've knocked on these doors many, many years ago all around. And Binance was illegally launching tokenized stocks in 2021. We tried to find all the right people. And, you know, at th that time, it's a bunch of crazy people and everything being done illegally. And then they pulled it down and said, this doesn't work, which was wrong. I mean, yes, it didn't work. <laughs> and so this, this isn't going to work for us because our licenses and just had a big brain fart and left it by the wayside. So anyway. That's that's the most that I can really say about that right now. All right, jumping into question number two here. So this one's pretty interesting. Um, do you guys have some quote unquote deal makers, meaning some subjects who bring somewhat regular offers to tokenize their other ways via IXS? Yeah, I mean, one of the models we have at IXSwap is, is this sort of software as a service model where if you're a company, you know, maybe you're a venture capital firm or you're a real estate group, you can you can co-brand a section and tokenize whatever you want, project A, project B. So yeah, we're, we're hard at work on that. I mean, most people have to launch their first RWA before they're thinking about launching like a whole bunch of them, but that's the goal is to find um, more issuers that have scalable, replicable products. And then again, you know, we, we're hard at work on that. that that's certainly... So the, the last conversation was about how do you scale up the distribution and the buy side? And this conversation is about how you scale up the sell side. There's a lot of people that want to sell an RWA, but you know, they're all over the shop. Sizes, locations, asset quality, terrible to good. 
Um, but we don't want to do one-offs, although we will. I mean, again, if you have never tokenized your own asset, any asset, you can only, the first time's the first time. You can, there's no other way to get around it. So, um, yeah. So, well, look, the goal is on the same side, on the, on the, on the sell side, is to do the same thing. Um, and we've got a couple of VC accelerators that we're speaking to now about bringing their startups onto the platform, which would certainly solve, you know, right in the line of this questioning, which is, yeah, then they could bring up a new startup every week or two. And we, we, we have the due diligence done and their branding is there. And it's very difficult because we have to do everything, right? We have to build the tech. We have to get the licenses. We have to launch out the utility. We have to pair it against some of the first RWA because the first people didn't even want to put up the other side. And so now, so we can't continue to do everything. It's too much. We need to find these groups of people that have the other do the due diligence on these assets. We did the due diligence on the, the, the company, but is it a good startup? We, we, we don't want to be the ones who have to determine that. We'd rather, you know, leverage the due diligence and the investment being made by a good quality VC to say, well, they're investing and then this is their reasons for it. And you guys can decide to go in or out and yeah, on to the next deal. All right. And also I just want to add to that from a marketing perspective, you know, IX swap has been getting a lot of traction lately and we do get a lot of inbounds as well. So to answer that question, you do get two to four inbound inquiries. And as Julian mentioned, it's, it's not always about hey, we have a startup, let's do this. There's a lot of DD that goes behind that and really want to make sure that everyone that comes into the platform and, and issuers included um, are generally safe and regulatory compliant and basically give the best world, best of both worlds for both um, investors and issuers. Um, okay, jumping into the yeah. question. All right. So um, I, I think this is more for a free-for-all, but the roadmap on Gitbook is empty for Q4 of this year. Um, what milestones or developments can we look forward to? Mm. Yeah, we just had a strategy session yesterday. Or was it today? I can't remember. Maybe it was yesterday. <laughs> um, long days. Yeah, look, I think... The best, the best thing that I think we can do is, is Gene, is to, um, I think we're going to finalize it all next week. So maybe one of our targets for the end of next week is that we, we get our plans into the Git books for, for people. I think IX Swap is, is, is happy and kind of proud of its transparency and its, and its development um, activity. Um, I think there was a report done a couple of weeks ago that we're in the top five or six projects that from, from code output, um, even versus. You know, much bigger projects by market cap. But um, yeah, I think, um, look, high level uh, version two, IXWAP version two, you know, Uniswap V4. So we're on IXWAP V2, we're, and we're, we're building on base for that. Um, yeah, huge amount of um, upgrades. You know, I think, you know, V1 was an MVP. Um, it had its own issues, but it was an MVP. Right? Um, first one ever in the world, plugging into these licenses, no one had done it before you know, protocols, issues, this, that, and the other. Um, but, you know, we got through it and we made it work. And, and so, so yeah, a massive upgrade to, to, the, to the platform is in, in the pipeline. I mean, we've recently just, uh, I think, announced, you know, a ton of stuff. I think that was probably already, I'm not sure if that was in there or not, but, you know, the staking programs, the, the MLMs coming um, as well, the rewards program where, you know, the community can introduce projects to their, communities and networks and if, if they if they come into it they get rewarded so it's a new point system um that's adding more value so yeah i think um anything else gene that that, that you can think of um yeah we still got a couple of questions here actually so i think the next one is um so this question is a little bit uh, confusing but uh could we get an update on the real estate platform using the SaaS service uh i think they're probably talking about um Flip innovations that used to be ready. Look, essentially, I mean, I'm not sure um, how much has exactly been out there, but um, it's it's being led by um, someone that's been heavily involved in the cryptocurrency space in Thailand from a technical perspective. Um, and he saw the opportunity for RWA, so he left the crypto space to focus on RWA. Some of the first assets coming down the pipeline are going to be real estate assets. They're working on, on, on closing the first rounds of funding. Um, we're working on um, getting the, the SaaS up there. They're a SaaS client, so they'll be getting up there. So this was the, I think, one of the first or second groups we, we put into the SaaS model. So there's been development and upgrades we've had to make. Um, 
but essentially, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking forward to getting that off the ground. A lot of the, the, the timing's really related to them. Um, I think we're, there's been a few changes and what bits and pieces, but we're excited to work with them. Really good group. And um, yeah, we're looking to do a lot more in Thailand. All right. And the next question here is, so I think this is pertaining to the IXS Launchpad, uh, the next new deals coming down the Launchpad. So will these new deals offer tokens up to the staking program? Yeah. Um, well, I guess the best way to put it is when we work on putting these deals together, um, we are um, asking that that's part of the deal. <laughs> so it's a bit of a negotiation still. Once we get more traction, um, we can just demand it and say, like, if you want to launch, you must cut off X percent of RWA and put it out there. But yeah, of course, I mean, there's no use us putting all this effort and energy to build a staking program if there's no rewards, right? So uh, we're aligned, I guess, with the, the person asked the question on, you know, uh, are we, what are we doing about that? So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll push every single person into doing that um, and build it up one by one. Okay, and here's a little another question. I guess it's a little bit more on the legal side. So it's pertaining. I've got sorry, just yeah. one second. I've got five minutes, and then I've got a uh, call with the protocol. Okay, but why don't we take on one more, uh, two more questions, and then let's call it an evening. Okay, sure. so second to the last question here being is so as a I guess it's pertaining to someone in the U.S. So I believe ISWAP still has control over those shares as it is the broker which is why it's legal for someone in the USA to have these tokens in their wallet, but they can't sell them, right? I don't, I think that questions, I don't necessarily understand. So, um, I, can you, can you repeat I, that? I think the question is trying to ask is if someone in the um, USA per se gets airdrop the RWA tokens, it's okay for them right. to have their wallet in their wallet, but they can't sell them per se. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, the long and the short of it is we can onboard USA investors today, but we don't. And it's not because we don't want them. It's because the reporting requirements from the US government are so onerous, it doesn't make sense today. Um, we are looking to partner up with the group in the US um, and therefore, you know, make a, a, a simple pathway for, for USA citizens. Um, Again, you know, we just can't do everything all at once. So that's the current situation. Um, it's not set in stone, but it's, it, it's how it works. And again, for the USA people, you know, one of our co-founders is, is USA as well. Um, and I mentioned earlier, like, you know, America's come back in the market and, and a super important market. Um, if you're not a US issuer, so if you are anyone else, Singaporean, and Australian, and Hong Kong, or Germany, none of those groups want the US investors either because it's the same problem with this super onerous reporting to the US government if you have US citizens as equity holders of your project. So, so um, yeah, so it's not, it's not really even just us that's the blocker right now. It's also the people issuing the tokens they don't want. But we want to find a solution. It's a little bit further down the line. Um, yeah. That's all I can say about that. All right. And I guess saving the last question finally here is, will the liquidity on base eventually match the liquidity on Ethereum? What was that, sir? Will the liquidity on base eventually match the liquidity on Ethereum? Oh, I think it's going fast to proceed. Um, yeah, we're just getting, just getting started, like, what, yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna fast you proceed. Okay, and I guess that's it for our monthly AMA for September. Um, thanks to everyone for joining in. I know Julian you got to jump off to another call, so maybe a few final words before we officially end this session. Yeah. Um, well, I've spoken a lot, and I think I've spoken enough. So thanks for everyone for listening. Appreciate the support. Um, yeah, get on the platforms. We've got a lot of more things coming down the pipeline and yeah, looking forward to the next uh, couple of months. All right. Thank you, everyone. That's wraps it up for a monthly AMA for September. And as Julian mentions, always just hop on the platform and we'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Cheers.